new people in the house today. Some old people come back. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good day. It's a good day in the Lord. Yeah. Before we start, I want to talk a little bit about the build out. God is really moving. Shelly said the water immersion's the highlight of the month. Every every weekend's the highlight of my month. Some people have different highlights, but every Sunday is my highlight. See you guys again and again and again. So the build out is going well. God is moving. Um, we, the sanctuary is taking form. So when you walk over there today, you'll be able to see what the sanctuary is going to look like. Um, as Shelly said, we have uh, the carpet has come in. We spent six thousand dollars on carpet. Um, we got another five thousand to spend on the other flooring in in the building. Um, we spent seventeen thousand dollars on chairs, but the good thing is there's three hundred chairs, so there'll be plenty of room. Plenty of room for just a little bit. And then we'll see what happens after that. We have a five-year lease over there. So God is going to move. And uh, probably end up one day having to go back to two services. And that's okay. We'll make it all work. Had a tear-out crew the first five days. I got about 30 hours of sleep the first five days. Second five days, I got about another 30 hours of sleep. So I'm going off about 60 hours of sleep in two weeks. But God is keeping me going. Derek Snodgrass talked about those Red Bulls from heaven, and I'm just drinking them. Not the actual Red Bulls, but whatever God's putting in me. I'm just drinking it up and taking it up and filling myself up with that. Really, the main thing I'm doing is praying. I'm keeping prayed up. That's what's giving me my energy and giving me my strength knowing where God's taken us, what we're doing, what he's taken us to. And I'm just so excited about that this morning. I don't know if she said the amount we're trying to raise. Um, we were at 50000 last week. Where we, we got 5000 come in this past week, not counting our tithes and offerings, because um, we still have to pay for this place until we get over there. Um, right now we have to pay for this place, and then the utility bills over at that place for the next three months. So... Um, and that's not a, it's, it's a lot more money than what we're, um, we planned on having to spend, but that's, God's got it. So we're not even worried about that at all. Like at all, we're not worried about finances, period. Um, we're still trying to raise $45,000, um, you know, to be in a good spot when we step in there and when we walk through the doors to be debt free, completely debt free. And that would be totally built out and having a little bit of money in the bank to, um, for the next couple months rent just so we have a little bit ahead just to give us that a um, little bit of a nest egg for the daycare to start and start funding the ministry um, so just keep praying about what God is have you do um, financially for the ministry don't give above and beyond what you're able to but give what the Lord asks you to and so thank you for that thank you for everyone that's poured into it thus far and um it, it takes a load off me as pastor, um, knowing that God has put his stamp of approval on what we're doing. It takes a load off of me, even though I don't worry about the financial part of I really have never worried about the financial part because he's proven all the way down through the line that he's going to pay for it. That was our agreement in the beginning. He said, if you do it, I'll pay for it. So it's going to kind of be like that field of dreams. You build it and they'll come. This is a field of dreams. All of us have dreams and visions and things that we want to do and see and accomplish in life. But this morning, I want to talk to you about the follow through. Last week, we talked about cracked doors, how some of us will, God will want us to shut a door and we'll put, put our foot in the door. We'll put a piece of tape over the, the lock mechanism just to be able to open that door back up in case this just don't work. That's not an option. A cracked door is not an option. When God wants to shut the door, let it be shut. Make sure it's shut. As I said last week, put some screws in it. Make sure it stays shut. Put some wedges up against it. Act like the enemy's trying to come in and get you. Put whatever up against it you need to put against it to keep that door shut. But when you shut it and you let God do it, it'll stay shut. 
Let's don't hang on to the crack doors. If you have crack doors today that you're leaving open, it doesn't matter what it is, life, marriage, drugs, shut them. Let God move. Ecclesiastes 7, 8. It says the beginning of a thing is better, or the end of a thing is better than the beginning. The end of a thing is better than the beginning. I remember when I got married, Shelly, as beautiful as she is, She's more beautiful now than she ever was. In the beginning, I thought, wow, this is a n- n- knocked down gorgeous woman. But now I'm, I'm, I don't even know what to say. She's, she's gotten in my mind, in my eyes, mind. She's just so much better. We started out at one place and here we are now. And so the end of a thing is better than the beginning. But we're still in the beginning. We're in the very, very beginning of this thing that God's doing. We're in a life-changing thing. We're in a city-changing thing, a state-changing, a country-changing mode. Not just us. There's other churches out there that are in the same spot. They're growing. God is moving. God is changing things. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And I think that's where we're at. We're, We're passing old things away, old thoughts, old mindsets, old things that we believed in before. And God's moving us into a new thing. Jesus is still real. He's still the same. He's still the God of God, Lord of Lords. But he's doing things different. Because the way that we did things, or the way that we perceived things to be done, it wasn't how he needed to be done. To accomplish what he needed to have accomplished. But I feel like today is the day he's moving in our lives. He's changing things for each one of us. But it's going to come in the follow through. You guys remember Paul? You know Paul. You love Paul. He's an amazing man of God. But Paul's start was kind of rough because he was killing people all over the place. He was killing Christians everywhere he went, putting them in prison, killing their families. But the end of that, what happened at the end? Paul heard from the Lord on the road to Damascus. He heard God say, Jesus spoke to him. And said, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you kicking against the stones or the pricks? Or why are you doing this? And he said, Lord, he called out to him. And he had an encounter with Jesus in that moment. And through that encounter, he moved and did what God said for him to do. Paul went through a lot of things. Paul went through a lot of things. But in the midst of everything that he went through, he did not quit. He did not give up. He followed all the way through until the end, until his death, he followed through. You ever been in that place where you're stuck? You don't know where you're going, what you're doing. God wants you to move into the place of having an encounter with Jesus. And in that moving, He wants you to have follow through. Today, that's my main thing. If I can explain it well to you today and give you some examples of follow through and what it means to follow through. On the voice of God, not our own voice, not the things that are in our head, but the things that actually God says to us. There's going to be evidence of those things. When God shows you something or he says something to you, his words are going to bring evidence to the words and behind the words. If you've got words and and, and people's coming and giving you words and you're leaning on those words, I'm not going to trust every word that someone gives me. We're all human beings. We all can mess it up real bad, real quick. And sometimes we lean on words from other people and we follow those words, what God, what those people say to us. When they say, God said to tell you this. There's going to be evidence of the follow through. In your life, there's going to be evidence. You're going to be in a better place than you were. And today, you're in a stuck place. God wants you to be in a better place. Today, if you're in a place of not growing, not moving forward, not progressing in your walk with Christ, Maybe you need to come and ask Jesus to come in your heart and live in your life. 
and forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Possibly some of you are going backwards. I've been there before. I've been to where I'm going backwards and not forward. But God has always wanted us to go on a forward motion. He always wants us to be moving forward, going higher, from level to level, from glory to glory, from place to place. Not being stuck in one place. We get stuck because we believe the lies from the enemy. We get stuck because we believe the enemy over the truth of what God says about us. About who we are and whose we are. You remember Jacob in the Bible? Jacob had... This is a crazy story. I mean, the story of Jacob was just a crazy story. How Jacob had deceived his brother. Him and his mom had come up with this little plan to deceive the brother and take a birthright. So Jacob had always been running his whole life. God had blessed him because he said he would. God follows through on his promises, said he would bless him. God blessed him. His family grew. His flock grew. Everything about him grew. But there come a day when Jacob was about ready to meet his brother. And they come and they said, Jacob, your brother's coming. He's got these men with him. There's thousands of men following him. So Jacob starts shaking a little bit. He's a little, he knew he'd done, messed his brother's life up. He thought, but God still blessed his brother. And in the midst of that, Jacob is ready to go and meet his brother. But before he did, he had an encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter with God. And he met God face to face and he wrestled with God. And in that wrestling with God, his hip was thrown out of his socket. Some of us would have quit. Had our hip got thrown out of our socket, we'd just quit and quit going and just give up. But he didn't. He didn't give up. He kept pressing on and pressing in and asking, questioning the one he was wrestling with. They gave him a new name that day. Gave him a new name. God wants to give you a new name. My new name is Whirlwind. I love it. Whirlwind. Remember the day he gave it to me. The moment that he gave me that name. The meaning behind that name for me. There's been evidence of that name down through the past five years. Evidence of that name through testimonies of other people. People that God's brought into my life. The whirlwind that spins out in front of this building. That drops all the trash right at the front door. So it's for us to clean up. It's true. I, I videoed it. It happens. There's just been evidence of the whirlwind. When he said to me at Bethel in Redding, California, he said, I'm squeezing everything out of you that's not of me. I'm creating a whirlwind in you, and your new name is Whirlwind. And I'm filling you up with the things of heaven that you, ex you can experience heaven on earth. My new name. It's whirlwind. And I've seen the evidence of my new name. And God wants to have a new name for every one of you. Ask him. Ask him to give you that new name. To show you that name. And he wants to give you a new name. And he wants to call you by that name. And Jacob wrestled with him. But he didn't quit. He didn't quit until God blessed him. He held on for the blessing. Hold on. Listen, don't quit. Hold on to the blessing. Hold on for the blessing to come. He heard God's voice and he was face to face with God. Jesus he was being baptized. A voice called out of heaven saying, This is my beloved Son who I am well pleased. Jesus heard the voice of his Father call out of heaven. And Jesus went through everything that he went through for you and I. He got a little bit of foretaste on what was going to happen. He could have bailed out. He chose not to. He chose to stay in it for you and I. He truly heard the voice of God. And through hearing the right voice, 
there became follow through. There became follow through with Jesus and he followed through all the way to the end. If Jesus would not have followed through, Paul would not have been able to have the encounter that he had on the road to Damascus. Paul would not have been able to met Jesus like he did and change what he was doing for the kingdom of God. He was killing people on his way to kill people. But God cried out to him. He heard that voice from God. It changed him forever. All the things that Paul went through, the shipwrecks, all the things that happened to him, he did not quit. In and out of jail, he did not quit. And the disciples, if you follow them all the way to the end of their stories, they did not quit. Peter, for a moment, quit. But when you realized that Jesus was right and his words were true, he was straight on from that moment. And it was a day that they all come together. They all come together in Acts chapter 2. And they were all in one accord. And they heard a sound from heaven. God wants to speak a sound over you. They heard a sound out of heaven of a mighty rushing wind. What kind of sound does God want to bring into your life to change things in your life? God spoke everything into existence. Everything was spoken into existence. It's by the voice of God. Everything obeyed the voice of God. And it come into play. I hear a lot of people say, God said this, and God said that. I wish that we wouldn't do that. Let's wait until we're in one accord. Because we need to see the evidence behind what God says. Some of us are saying, God told me to do this and God told me to do that, but there's no evidence behind what he said to do. It's your own thought. It's your own words. And there's evidence behind that because of your lifestyle. When Jesus says to do something, we do what he says to do and we follow through with what he says to follow through with. There's evidence of that. This ministry right here is evidence of what God said to do. The growth that we're getting ready to experience is evidence of what God said to do. Shelly and I being in Florida, ready to move to Florida. And hearing the words of God. Choosing not to do our own thing, but to follow what God said is evidence. You know, we were getting ready to buy a condo in Florida. We actually had a condo lined up. We were remodeling the condo, getting ready to buy it. We already had a contract ready. This is before we even got any word from God about coming back, before we met any people down there, before any of that, before this way before this ministry. So with the word that we thought that we had got from God, or just this condo that we were going to move into necessarily wasn't even a word from God. We just, we, just what we wanted. Shelly always wanted to be in Florida, and we just was making it happen. So we had this condo lined up, and we were doing the remodel job on this condo, and uh, we had called back to Indiana and got some advice from some people back here, and they just didn't feel comfortable about it. So we leaned upon that. We asked the Lord, what is this? We're wanting this condom. We're wanting to do this. But because we leaned on them with, the, with the, what they felt like the Lord was saying, we trusted them for the advice that they were giving us. We didn't buy the condo. Come to find out the condo, there's a bunch of scrutiny with the condo. I got ripped off about $20,000 for my work on the condo. That's all right. God will pay it back. I'm not worried about it. But all those things came into play for us to come to the moment right here for the follow through. There's got to be follow through. There has to be follow through in everything that you guys do, everything that you touch, everything that you put your hands to. So when we, we hear this, we hear this, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. But the question is, did God say it? 
did he really say it? Before we say those words, let's see what kind of follow-through happens with that. Let's see what kind of evidence follows that word because we're throwing it around so easily. And listen, if you've ever said God said it and your life is in a mess and a shamble, maybe he didn't say it. Not saying you can't hear from God and, and mess up. I'm just saying, if you hear from God, there's going to be some evidence behind those words that God gives you if you line up and you say you're going to do what he's asking you to do. You guys good? I don't have no funny jokes this morning. <laughs> I could tell you one, but this is just a serious subject this morning. I don't know why we're here. I know last week we're not we're talking about cracked doors and not being in a cra leaving cracked doors open and closing the doors. This week he wanted to talk about following through with what he said to do. If he's given you a vision to do something, do it. If he's given you a call, do it. But make sure it's him. That's all I'm saying this morning. Make sure it is him. Make sure it is his voice and not the enemy's voice. You guys know how how close the enemy can mimic God. And who he is. My goodness, he hung out with him for who knows how many years. He knows him inside and out. And he knows well how to mimic him. He knows how to deceive you and make you think it's God when it's really him. That's why we need to know his voice. That's why we need to be in prayer. In season, out of season, constantly in prayer. Serving him, loving him, moving on his behalf, doing what he's called us to do, doing what he said for us to do. Jacob had messed up many times, but yet God blessed him. God's going to bless you even in your mess ups. He's going to bless you. Don't be deceived by the blessing that you're doing everything okay. Let the evidence show your walk people around you, the lives that you're changing, the people that you're moving, the people that you're touching. Jacob followed through. He met his brother instead of his... Listen. He didn't know what was going to happen in that moment when he met his brother. But when he met his brother, what happened? His brother hugged him and kissed him on the neck. Wow. Jacob tried to explain himself. His brother said, no, don't worry, man. I'm blessed. Look at all my family. Look at all that I have. God has blessed me as well. He just wanted his brother back. He just wanted to get along. In Jacob's life, through his sons, and through the life of one of his sons, follow-through happened. All these things happened. Follow-through. You just read those words, and you read everything that happened with Jacob, the brothers, with Joseph, all the miracles that happened, it's all in the follow through. They could have quit at any time. And none of those things would be written in the Word because they wouldn't have happened. It's in the follow through. Shelly and I could have said no. Or we could have said yes, and the first time we got stomped on, which has been about a million times since we said yes, we could have walked away. But we said no. No to walking away and yes to Jesus. He is the way and the truth and the life. Have you been beat up, Shelly? Been beat up a few times? It's all right. We just get some makeup, cover up the bruises, and move on. Some of you have been beat up, but you keep moving on. You keep coming. I might have beat some of you up, but you keep moving on. I hope not, but I could have. I could have. I mean, I'm growing too. Following through with everything that he has for you is so valuable. Jacob followed through. Jesus followed through. Paul followed through. Shelly and I are in the follow through. We're just starting. 
but we're in the middle of it right now, following through. You guys like worship? I love worshiping. Let me explain this to you. I'm guarding this platform so well that I'm building a worship team, but it's behind the scenes. So we're where we are, and I'm okay with it. Until we get a worship team that's in one accord, because this is the deal. We have to have a worship team that's in one accord with heaven and what heaven wants. Because when they speak, things are going to change. I have to be careful who speaks, when they speak, how they speak. God asked me from this platform. Because when you speak, things change. They said God spoke and the world began. Let there be light and there was light. He spoke to Shelly and I. This was built. He's speaking to you and there's things going to be built through you. This ministry is going to be built through you. But you have to be centered up with Jesus and what he has for you and what he wants for you. You have to be. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. If you're breathing breath today, he's got something for you to do. He does. He does. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk with God. It doesn't matter if you just came to Christ and you're just learning. Keep learning. Keep growing. Leaning on him for everything. Lean on man for a little, but lean on God for everything. I don't want us to be a people of this, this church and this community to walk around saying God said this and God said that, and yet we live our life like a hellion. And people see that and they're like, you're a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Then why do you do this? Why do you do that? How are you going to answer them? How big is the God that you serve? Is he big enough to overcome the things that you're going through? Is he big enough to overcome your struggles, your battles, your addictions? Yeah, he is. He's big enough to overcome everything that we struggle with. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. The addictions, the struggles, the battles, all those things. Greater is God. And so, I kind of like some of the storms that I've gotten to go through. <laughs> I kind of like them. I don't want to get comfortable with them, but I kind of like them because I've been, you know, in, in, the, in the fight, you know. I mean, I like to, I mean, I, I, I can scrap. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun sometimes, but it hurts sometimes, you know. And, and, I, don't, and I don't want... I don't want to always be in that battle. But right now, I'm learning. I'm growing through the battle. I'm growing through the things that I've, that I've gone through. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. And I'm sure you guys are growing as well. I see some of your growth. Some of you are being expedited. That next level, that next phase, that thing that God has for you. I'm excited for you. I am excited for you. So pray about the worship team. Because it's going to be big. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Uh, hang in there. Don't give up. Be okay with what we're doing for now. Be okay if I get up here and barely strum a guitar. Be all right with that for now. It's not about that. It's about his presence. It's not about the music. It's not about what I'm saying right now other than if what comes from God. It's about him. It's about Jesus. It's about an encounter with Holy Spirit. coming in that place with him, loving him, leaning on him, serving him, glorifying him, magnifying him. If your marriage is worse today than what it was when you started, let's change that around. Let's change that around. Remember when you fell in love. Because the end is supposed to be better than the start. 
You're supposed to be in a better place right now than you were when it started. You might have started out, some of you and I have, doing drugs. But the end of that is, I'm not. And I'm where I am today. You started out in the marriage. It was good. The enemy tried to come in, kill, steal, and destroy the marriage. Don't let him. Don't give him, don't give him one moment in that. Don't let him step to your marriage one moment more than what he already has. Give it to God and let him move in you. When I talk about marriage, the follow-through of a marriage, you guys might think Shelly and I are perfectly married and we're perfect and everything. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. I probably get on her nerves more than, than anybody. She don't get on my nerves. Muy poquito. But I'm sure I get on her nerves a lot. And there's times I might say something to her that might be a little off. I might tell her to center up sometimes. I think I said it this morning. <laughs> but I love her, and I'm not going to quit on her. I'm going to move forward. We're going to continue to move forward, even though we get irritated to each other and we rub each other wrong sometimes. I like quality time. And she's like, we're together all the time. <laughs> we, get, we get quantity time, but I like quality time. I like that time where it's nothing else. We went out the other day, and she's still doing church stuff on her phone. I said, no, put that thing up. This is me and you. I've been 10 days without hanging out with you. This is me and you. Yesterday we went and I bought an $11 pair of pants. 11 bucks. I'm not going to tell you where I got them at because I don't want you to get my hook up, but <laughs> Uve will be up there right away. No. We went, been losing some weight. I've been losing some weight. The Lord asked me, he said to me, he said, I want you to, this next season I'm getting ready to take you and I want you to be fit and healthy. He said, you're going to need to be. We should all be fit and healthy all the time, but he said, but he specifically said these words to me, you're going to need to be. And if I can show you a picture from two months ago to now, this is the follow through. I'm just following through with what he said to do. There's evidence of it. I'll keep my big jeans, just in case. No. That'd be like keeping a cracked door. I'm shutting it. I'm throwing them away. Kind of feels good. I kind of feel good. Lost a couple pounds, 34 to be exact. 34 pounds in two months. I'm pretty excited about that. So therefore, I can give you my sales pitch of what we're doing, and you guys could all buy into it. <laughs> you want to know, really, it'd be good. Ask Shelly, because it's a really good program, and it works. But I followed through with what he said to do, and there's evidence of the follow-through. That's all I'm asking you to do this morning, is follow through with what God says. Make sure it is the voice of God saying what, he, what you think he's saying. Go to someone else and ask the other person, hey, I feel like I'm hearing the voice of God saying this. Can you help me pray into this? Instead of right away going, oh, you heard it. I'm going to spit it out right now. No, just let's, let's, let's maul. It's okay if you maul on it for a few minutes. It's okay if you let it ponder. You know, Mary pondered when Jesus was, when the angel come to her and told her about it. She pondered on those things. She thought about it. She didn't right away, straight away, go out and start blabbing it out. The woman at the well did. She just went straight to the city and started telling everybody everything she, that Jesus come and told her everything she ever did. But there was evidence behind that. Because when she did that, she went and ran to the city. And when she ran to the city, what happened? Everybody had an encounter with Jesus through her. And then they went and met Jesus for themselves. And then they come back to her and said, we don't need to go off your encounter anymore because we're going off his encounter because we met him for ourselves. 
But she had a word from God, straight from God. So she knew it was him because he was standing right in front of her. So she went and shared the word. But if you're not sure it's God, hold on to it a minute. Maybe you need to hold on to it for a while before you share it. Because this is the thing, and I'll close with this. If you speak a word to someone that you feel like God has said, and you give them a word, and it's not a word from God, that can damage that person for a lifetime. Because some people are waiting to lean on something. If you give them a false word that's not from God, it could change their life forever for, for the bad. There's some people that are leaning on words that have been spoken from man, and there's no evidence behind the leaning of that word. There's no evidence behind those words. I'm careful who I let. You can speak a word over me all day long if you want, but I'm careful what ones I take. I'm very careful. If you're going to speak a word over me, your life better line up to the word that you're speaking over me, or I'll just throw it right out. Because I don't feel like God's going to give you a word for me when you are not where you need to be. If, if he does, I'll know it, and I'll receive it. Yeah. So Jacob followed through, even though he had a hip problem for life. Paul followed through, even though he had a thorn in his flesh. God was keeping Paul from all the revelation that Paul was getting from heaven. God was keeping him from being a prideful man. The enemy was constantly pounding at him and pounding at him and pounding at him to keep him low. It's all right. The enemy might be chasing you, but don't let him have you. He's going to give you problems. He's going to give you battles, but don't let him have you. He's going to be on your heel. Get behind me, Satan. He's going to come back. Get behind me, Satan. He's going to come back. Keep him behind you. Don't let him get in front of you. Don't let him get in front of you ever. And Paul, even though he had that thorn in his side, he asked God three times to take that thorn away from him. God said, my grace is sufficient. You'll be all right because you're made strong in your weakness. Where you think it's weak, you're going to be made strong. There is strength and weakness. Don't take weakness as a, as, a, as a fault. Lean on Jesus for the strength that, that you have, that you need. From the Word of God, lean on Him. Paul still followed through. So if you got a limp, keep moving. Got a problem in your body? Keep moving. Keep pressing in. Keep believing in healing. Keep believing in what God paid for on the cross, but keep moving. Don't stop. There's a commercial on TV, I think, it says a, um, a body in motion stays in motion. Can't get stagnant if you're in motion. You can't lock up. A tin man locked up because he quit moving. Keep the oil on the joints. Keep the word of God. Keep the oil on the joints. Let it lubricate them. Keep moving. Let's stand. Close your eyes for a moment. The word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It's all that you need. You lean upon Jesus. You read his word inside and out. And you know his voice. He's going to give you a testimony through his voice. He's going to give you a testimony and a follow through. I believe there's some here this morning that need to follow through. And the first step is having that encounter with Jesus. The first step is, is rededicating your life to Jesus, giving your life wholly to Jesus, to where maybe when you did before, you, you just backed up and you quit and you, you, you gave in just because of the problems of life and the cares of life. But today you say, I'm going through, I'm going to follow through with everything that God has for me. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. 
told you last week. If you're going to say yes, mean it. If you're going to want to follow through, mean it. Don't just, don't just say, I'm going to do it just to say it because the service is right for it. No, if you're going to come up here and pray, I'm, I want you to mean it. Because if you don't mean it, and you leave that door cracked, the house swept, the enemy's going to come back in seven times worse. I believe there's people here this morning that have never asked Jesus in their heart. Never really asked Jesus in their heart. I'm going to have you raise your hand. You've never asked Jesus to come in your heart. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. We have to do this in open, in public. Let me explain that. You might have said the words, Jesus, come into my heart. But your actions did not show one ounce of truth in that. But when I ask you this question, do you ever ask Jesus to come in your heart? Has there been a life transformation after that? Has there been a change in your life after that? If there has not been a change in your life, and old things pass away, all things are becoming new. Raise your hand. See that hand. Anybody else? Listen, your life is going to get so much better. It's not going to stay where it's at. Your finances are going to get better. Everything is just going to get better. Yeah. The full house. We've got one raised your hand. John, come up here. I believe in you, buddy. I believe in you. Listen. I want you to look here. We've got a full house of people here this morning. And all of them. The city's going to be turned upside down, ain't it? We've got a full house of people on fire for Jesus. Ready to do everything God says to do. Ready to live how God says to live. There's going to be evidence. We're going to see it. Next week, you're going to go out in the highways and byways and touch someone. You're going to bring someone else. We're going to just pack the place until we have to go over there at the other place before it's even done. We'll just stand over there. We're going to stand and worship over there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. John's had a rough life. But God loves him so much. If it would have been just for John, would have been just for him, it would have been worth it all. So you saints, come up. Let's pray for John. John, I want you to just ask Jesus with everything in you, with your words, to forgive you of your sins come into your life cleanse you from all unrighteousness you want to live for him serve him obey him trust his every word yeah John are you willing to walk away from everything that that the world has dealt you everything yes You got people here that care about you. You got family that cares about you. You are loved. You are created to be an amazing son of God. That's how he dreamed you. Don't look at your past. Put it behind. Don't step in shame. Stay in shame. Let the enemy lie to you. Steal from you everything he's tried to steal from you. Walk in the fullness that God has for you from this point on. We're here for you. We believe in you. He believes in you. Yeah. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Jesus, for joining.
Thank you, Lord, that you're moving in his life. Father, show him right now how you see him. Show him how you see him. Just for a moment, let's pray in the spirit, just for a moment. Let your voice be heard in the atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Yes. Thank you for John. Thank you for the encounter right now that he's receiving. His life is yours. His life is yours, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Bless you, John. The gift of faith, yes. But in in 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about a gift of faith. Yes. A faith that's strong. A faith that you can hide behind. That you can go before you. And so, um, and and the pain is also. Thank you. The Bible says that the Lord is our rear guard, saying, This is the way to walk in it. And so, just to encourage you this morning that God is giving you a shield to stand behind and to raise high to protect you from the fiery darts that he's going to extinguish those things that have tried to come up against you in the past no more because you truly are yes and his glory is going to shine upon you from this day forward and we just thank you God thank you God thank you God (laughs) how you feel John yeah. 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 I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. This is what it's about. Be on fire. Has a word of God to go home with. Yeah. Bob has some of those one-year Bibles. Through the Bible, he got some a new new uh, box of them. So go back here if you need one. Go back and get one. Thank you, thank you guys for being here today. Bring someone else with you tomorrow or next week, not tomorrow. Well, you can come tomorrow and work at the building if you want. Um, bring somebody with you. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for just showing that God is moving, God is touching. Thank you for being a part of Life and Love Ministry Center, and uh, we expect great things as we attempt great things for him. Jesus saying, have a good week.